let's talk a little bit about uh, the state of the art and uh, how we how we got there. As you can see, I'm experimenting a little bit with the setups. So please let me know in the comments or on Piazza what you prefer, or if you just don't mind how it is presented. So now. As we saw in the last video, the problem with very deep networks is that they often have a difficult time to converge. Some tricks like deep supervision help where you can uh, reconstruct a partial output at uh, intermediate stages and backpropagate the loss also from there. Um, these, are, these are the tips that are attached here to the sides of this inception network. Uh, this this helps to some degree, but but people thought that there there must be there must be actually better ideas than this, and and this is uh, what the original idea in batch normalization was. So how can we get rid of all of these additional convergence tricks to make our networks deeper and still converge so that the gradient goes through from the back to the front um, without losing it basically basically the idea is at least that was what the intuition was at the time when uh, this was invented as as we are training a network the gradients percolate through from here in in this case here in this network from the top to the bottom right from the loss to the um, to the input and so the last layers this here so, so these last layers here in the network will start to adopt uh, quite quickly and so they adopt to whatever the labels actually are and then the next layer down will start to adopt next the next layer down will also start to adopt after a while and so we get this cascade of stuff that keeps that keeps changing over time the trouble is as I'm adopting from the top down the features are going the features are going back up right so they're starting the, the features change change back up during back propagation and they are going to change so now that last layer that was just adopted quite well um will will have to readopt now to the new inputs and and it, so it takes a very long time to converge to make this happen for all of these layers Maybe we can fix things. Maybe we can fix at least something, right? So we can fix them by picking, for example, a given mean and a given variance and just uh, at least correcting for that um, as we train, as we train networks with these. You don't want to completely fix all the layers, but at least you could say we're going to fix them up to an affine transformation uh, that we are going to learn separately from from the layers. Affine transformations means nothing else than a multiply at, right? Okay, so let's say we pick a mean and a variance and anything, right? You 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 know mu and sigma squared, and we then renormalize the data. So so as we take as we take x i minus the mean x i minus the mean divided by the variance or standard deviation. And, and then we allow for separate coefficient gamma and a separate uh, offset beta to take care of things. And, and this is basically batch normalization. So whatever mini batch comes in, I estimate the mean and the variance and learn two additional parameters to take care of things on a global level. And then I have batch normalization. That's all what the batch normalization uh, does. But, but this is basically where you should start asking questions. Well, with the benefit of hindsight and a couple of years later, it's always really easy uh, to ask those questions. Um, whether whether that really uh, tackles covariant shift. And the initial idea was to actually get rid of the covariant shift from mini batch to mini batch, but it turned out later that this was not really the case. Well, however, it works. It works actually very well. And uh, people started asking questions why why this is actually the case. And the awful truth is that uh, 
the original motivation was actually wrong so it didn't it didn't reduce coherent shift there is actually a paper by by Lipnet or from 2018 where they go and measure all of the covariant shift in these networks and they find out that it actually makes covariant shift worse in that, but still it works so so why why does something like this works so actually it turns out that basically this is doing regularization by noise injection you compute a mean and a variance on a mini patch okay a mini a mini patch of say maybe 64 observations and and so what you're effectively doing is you're you're subtracting some sort of empirical mean from the data and, and that's obviously noisy right and you're dividing by some empirical standard deviation that's obviously also noisy if you only know it from your mini patch uh, this is one of the reasons why if you use batch normalization you really don't need dropout in the same network they kind of do the similar similar thing in terms of capacity control. This is also the reason why batch norm is quite sensitive to the actual mini batch size, right? If you if you pick a mini batch that's too large, then you're not injecting enough noise and you're not regularizing enough. If you're if you're picking one that's too small, then basically the noise becomes way too high and then you're not converging very well actually. This, this doesn't matter so much as for um, for a single GPU training implementation, but as soon as you go to multi-GPU training, it, it starts to matter quite immensely. Um, so what, what do you do during test time for patch normalization? Well, what you do is you just fix this essentially. So remember there are those parameters uh, gamma and beta they, they are learned, so they are basically learned scale and a learned offset. We, we fix them and for the means and variance we actually are going to use the running average uh, of a, just a large sample uh, size mean. So if you have a dense layer then you just use normalization for all the activations and uh, and if you have a convolutional layer, then you use batch norm per channel. Okay. So for every mini batch, a batch norm layer computes a new mean and variance during training. Um, th th this this layer, like a few others, requires the train flag. You might have seen in PyTorch already. You can put your network into training stage. Uh, to set this correctly because this will be different the behavior of this layer will be different during training and during testing 